Happy Wednesday. It's Landon with the Kitsap Region. Excited to introduce a special speaker for tonight. Kyle Toll had prepared a contribution lesson for our Easter service, and we thought there was so much content and things to think about in there that we decided to move it to midweek so we could have a little bit more space to think through the things that he's talking about. It's a great continuation of our midweek series, Digging Deep, as we talk about our finances in a really challenging time. Hey, Kyle Toll here from the Puyallup region. Um, wanted to bring you a, a contribution lesson uh, topic that uh, I've been studying out and praying about, thinking about <clears throat> related to, um, you know, fear in times of uncertainty uh, regarding our finances. Um, and uh, when is it wise, um, when is it wise to store up and, and when are we uh, foolishly hoarding? So I want to explore that a little bit, look at some scriptures. Uh, I hope you're genuinely uh, curious to answer this question uh, for yourself and the situation your household is in. Uh, personally, I want to be wise with my finances. Uh, but I also never want God uh, to find me uh, serving my finances uh, as master or for God to say to me uh, what he said to the rich man in Luke chapter 12, verse 20, he said, but God said to him, you fool, this very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. You know, we're in unprecedented time. You're probably sick of hearing that. Uh, and the human behavior in that time is, is, is fascinating. We've seen others uh, panic buy uh, food, and toilet paper from shelves, even though we have no supply shortages. So when is it wise to store up? And when is it foolish hoarding? What does the Bible teach us about this? How much is enough? When is it being wise versus when is it hoarding? Joseph stored up grain for the coming famine. In Genesis chapter 41. Um, but what about storing up based on fear or uncertainty? When is, when is that prudent? Is that needed? If you look in Genesis chapter 41, <clears throat> verse 47, it says, During the seven years of abundance, the land produced plentifully. Joseph collected all the food produced in those seven years of abundance in Egypt and stored it in the cities. In each city, he put the food grown in the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up huge quantities of grain, like the sand of the sea. It was so much that he stopped keeping records because it was, it was beyond measure. The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began. Just as Joseph had said, there was famine in all the other lands, but in the whole land of Egypt, there was food. When all Egypt began to feel the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. When the famine had spread over the whole country, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold grain to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe throughout Egypt. And all the world came to Egypt to buy grain from Joseph because the famine was severe everywhere. You know, we should always be storing up for a time of need, even if it means living below our means. The idea of saving and having something to share is, is found throughout the New Testament as well. Ephesians 4.28 talks about um, <clears throat> that those who uh, have been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. 2 Corinthians 12.14 refers to uh, that children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. The idea of having something to share. And Proverbs 22, verse 4 says, Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches, honor, and life. It takes humility to save for the future. It takes humility to save for an uncertain time that we don't yet foresee. And yet, that should be our aim. We don't want to embrace the rampant consumerism that's around us where we go into debt to afford more earthly possessions. We want to be humble in our approach to our finances. <clears throat> but what about where we are now? Many of you are still employed, but concerned about the future. What if the economy tanks further? What if we enter the next Great Depression? What if grocery stores stop being stocked? Or, or what if people start going door to door and, and, and stealing from each other? Or if society crumbles into some kind of post-apocalyptic waking nightmare? First of all, these are all just fears. There is and will be economic impact on what's going on, but there's very little risk of a nightmare scenario playing out. In fact, uh, if it did play out, it would likely be because we gave in to fear and we shrink back and we withheld 
and we and we altered our normal behavior in anticipation due to our fear. We live in a society and economy where if we all pull back because of fear, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Our fear can literally create the nightmare that we're afraid of. In Ecclesiastes, it says, I have seen a grievous evil under the sun. Wealth hoarded for the harm of its owners. If you buy more than your fair share, then what's left for others? Or what about the healthcare worker who's getting off shift, who's living, living that uh, health public health crisis and they want to buy food, right? Or cleaning supplies so they can protect their family at home. There's nothing there for them because it was all, it was all bought up. What about the elderly and those who are in need? Should they have to go to five different stores because people selfishly and foolishly bought everything? Proverbs eleven twenty six says, People curse the one who hoards grain. They pray God's blessing on the one who is willing to sell. So what about giving our contribution in times of fear, uncertainty, and doubt? When is it wise to withhold? When is it wise to pull, pull back? In, in Isaiah <clears throat> Verse, uh, or chapter 43, verse 1 says, But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Now, when it comes to giving our contribution, if you still have income, now is the time to continue to give faithfully. Let's not store up for ourselves treasures on earth. Let's serve the one true master. Let's not be overcome by fear. Let's give faithfully. Faith and fearlessly. So when is it wise versus when is it hoarding? Here's my conclusion from my study and what we've talked about. Storing up out of fear for the immediate future is not wise. In fact, it can create great harm to your fellow man. Always saving gradually out of humility and wisdom as the future is always uncertain is more in line with God's will for us. So as, we, uh, as we pray, prepare to give our contribution Let's keep this in mind that if we have income and we're tempted to hold back to store up, uh, this is the time to continue being faithful and fearless. Thank you, Kyle, for a great video. It certainly gives all of us a lot to think about and pray about as far as what it means to be godly in our finances in a, in a challenging time. I know there are still lots of areas that we need to make Jesus Lord of our life, uh, whether it comes to our normal contribution, our hope contribution we usually take up once a month, our special missions contribution that we normally take up once a year. Uh, that's a lot right now. But for us to have a, something to focus on, to be faithful and fearless in the way we pursue those things, I'm grateful for that charge. I know that Jesus always calls us to give him our best. Our best might look different from time to time. Certainly when it comes to our finances, that can go up and down. But for us to continue to have the charge of Jesus as Lord, I'm grateful for, uh, for that opportunity. So thank you for tonight. Pray that everything's going well with you guys. Stay safe and keep the faith.